Hello and welcome. This is Steve from Whiskey and Red Design. In this video, I am going to give you a WooCommerce product tutorial. I'm going to show you both how to build a simple product and a variable product, and then how to duplicate that product so that we don't have to repeat all of our work again and we can reproduce and make edits to build out our shop. So go ahead and jump in right here. This is gonna be the product that we are going to create here. Uh, so we have a title, we have a price, we have some text here in our short description box, uh, we have our main image, and then we have our gallery set up as well. Uh, we also, for this example here, this is the variable product, uh, allow people to purchase both the physical book and the ebook with a different price and different options later for a forced download versus shipping. Then down here, I have the description box, the long description box, and then the option for reviews. Uh, so very, very simple build out here, um, but as you apply this to your own projects, it'll give you a really basic breakdown and orientation so you know where everything in the back end is, uh, so it gives you that little bit of frame of reference. So what I'll go ahead and do here is I'll go to our products menu in our dashboard to create a new product. So on the left-hand side here, just below WooCommerce, we have our products. So if I click this, I'll get the uh, menu here of all the products that I've created. I know there's a ton of them. And I'll add a new product. So pretty straightforward process here. Um, of course, I'm generally gonna start with the product name. So I'm just gonna put in here test product two. And then what I like to do is use this backwards U shape. Uh, this way I make sure that some of the very important things that go into our product builds uh, get covered and they don't get forgotten about. So on the right hand side here we have our product categories. This is a pretty easy interface to use. I'll add a new product category here that is books. And when I click add new product category, it will add it and automatically select it here. Now if I want to use a subcategory as well, I can put in here workbooks. And then here where I have parent product category, to make this a subcategory, I'm gonna make books the parent category. Then when I add the new product category, lo and behold, we have our books with our subcategory of workbooks. Uh, tags function just the way tags do everywhere in WordPress, everywhere, basically on the internet, for your posts, products, portfolios, pages, everything. Um, so I won't get too deeply, I won't go into that at all, um, as it's pretty straightforward to tag your uh, product here. Um, our product image box, however, I will select a product image, so I'll use these preloaded ones that I've put in here. So we'll set our product image there, that's our main image, and then I'll set a few in the gallery just to spice things up a little bit, and this can be done by just holding down control or the command button on Mac and adding to the gallery. So there we go, we have our product gallery. Now our little reverse U-shape, if I go all the way to the bottom. So, orientation-wise, our product short description, this description on the front end that's on top is actually at the bottom on our back end. And likewise, our main description box is all the way up here at the top. And this for our salient purposes is going to produce down here at the bottom in our descriptions tab. So inside of our short description box all the way down here at the bottom, I'm just gonna copy and paste some Latin text here and voila, we're done. And if I wanna spice it up, I can highlight it. And if I add this extra little toggle, somewhere here will let me justify. Ah, we're not worried about it. Okay, we'll move on. We'll skip our product data for now and we'll just go up to our long description and I'll copy a longer description into this box here. Now I'll go back down to our product data box here. So, to create a simple product, pretty straightforward. We set a price. So this would be if I'm just selling one version of the book. I'm just selling a physical workbook that I'm going to ship to my customers. Uh, this gives you the option here for a sale price and to set a schedule. Um, we're not gonna worry about tax things. That's just a whole nother animal to get into. Uh, but as far as we are here on our general tab, it automatically defaults into a simple product and gives us the option for virtual and downloadable products. You'll see this as we add variables in just a second here, how these function. But primarily virtual is gonna be for your 
services that you're selling online are not actually shipping anything, nor are they downloading anything. And then we have our downloadable, which of course is a downloadable product. And oftentimes these work in conjunction when you do have a downloadable product and you won't be physically shipping anything. Now we can go to our inventory tab. We could just type in a really basic SKU here. So I'm just gonna use workbook 002. And I am going to not set it to manage a stock. This option here is just whether or not it's sold individually. So for something like services, it's beneficial. You don't allow people to buy five of them. You're just selling one at a time. But because this is a book, it's helpful to allow people to purchase more than one. Uh, we'll skip through our shipping options here. This is where you can set uh, your actual specific weight, dimensions, and a shipping class uh, to your product. Uh, our linked products are our cross sells, upsells, those things down at the bottom when you see related products. So we can set those manually here. Our attributes we'll talk about in just a second. And then we have this advanced tab here that we can turn on and off reviews. Some people don't like to have reviews on their site. Uh, and then we can add little notes and things like that. Uh, so that covers our simple product. It's really straightforward. Um, let me just make sure I put something here. And I'll go ahead and preview this and show you what it looks like. So our test product too, we have our title, we have our price, we have our short description here, ability to add multiple to the cart. We have our featured image in our gallery. And then down below we have our longer description. So pretty straightforward, pretty quick to add a product here. Now we'll go ahead and go into how to add a variable product. I'm gonna go ahead and publish this to save the changes. Sometimes with WooCommerce, especially with the product data box, we sometimes lose things uh, without, or I'm sorry, they don't populate in our preview function without updating the actual product. So I'll go back down here to our product data box. I'm gonna convert this simple product into a variable product. Really simple, click the box, go to variable product. Now a lot of things are gonna move out of this general tab because they're gonna, you'll see them later when we actually focus the specific variations. What this technically does is create separate products that each have their own individual settings. So to do this, everything else remains the same, but I'm gonna click this attributes box. And then right here where it says custom product attribute, I'm gonna click add. Now for variations or variables on the actual product, what I wanna do is I don't wanna make this visible on the product page. And I wanna tell WooCommerce to use this as a variation. So here I can put book format. And then as far as inputting our val uh, values, you can see it does give you directions. Uh, you wanna put them in, in that format where you wanna type your variable out, use that vertical line to separate, and then put your next variable. So you could continue on here if you had a bigger list where you had an e different ebook format, maybe for Kindle, and so on. So every single thing that text that is separated by one of these vertical lines will become a new variable. So we'll just stick with the two for now, and then I'll just click Save Attributes. Once my attributes are saved, I can click on the Variations tab, which is a new tab here with our variable product. So when I click Variations, I can manually add them, or I can click this box, and I can ask WooCommerce to create variations from all of the attributes that I just said which for us is only two. Give you this little pop-up box that says it can only do 50 variations per run, not affecting us here, and then it lets us know we created our two variations. So here are our variations. We both have a physical book and an ebook. So if I actually click this item here, the little hamburger will open up, and we get to set our specific physical book variation options. So here's where we can set a physical book that will ship to our client, and then our downloadable ebook as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna leave the SKU the same for now. I'm gonna set our physical book price at $14.99. Again, we have a sale price option as well. I'm gonna leave it in stock. I'm not gonna worry about the weight and dimensions, not worrying about the shipping or the tax class or the description here. I'm just gonna straight up have this as a physical good that is going to ship for $14.99. So if I close up, and this will compress just like that, and I'll look at my ebook, here's where I can set a downloadable virtual product. So I'm gonna set downloadable, 
and also virtual because I want to make sure that no shipping is involved here. And then let's say we have a different price here. So our ebook is $9.99. Leave it as in stock, not worried about the tax for now. But down here, I do have my downloadable files box. All I have to do is click add file and I can do choose file. This just uses our WordPress media gallery here. So I already have a PDF uploaded here. So I'll go ahead and insert that right in here. And if I want to give it a different name other than that file name, so test workbook two, you could give it a specific file name. And then just below here, you have limits to your downloads. So if you want to limit someone to a one download limit, and then if you want to give them an expiration date, you can set the number of days that that download link will be available before it expires. Now, once I'm done here, I just click save. Make sure you click the save button as the variable menus have a little bit of a different, have a different save area than your overall product. So once that's saved, I'm gonna go ahead and just update my whole product just to make sure everything populates when we hit that preview button. So when I preview our product here, Lo and behold, looks very similar, but we do have our variations here. So notice the price range change, and then options to buy the physical book and the ebook. Now, if they check out with the ebook, when they get to the checkout and they pay, they're going to get that forced download, and then it's also going to be in their WooCommerce receipt. There's going to be the listed download link in case their computer misses that forced download. And then for the physical book, they're just going to get the receipt, and then you get to go ahead and take care of your shipping to get it out there. Now, really quickly, I'm just going to show you how to duplicate this product so that you don't have to do that work again. So if you wanted to add another workbook, I'm just going to go to the dashboard and go to our products menu again. Here I have my two test products. And if I want to duplicate, it's really as simple as clicking this duplicate button. When I click this button, it's going to automatically open up in an edit window for a new product. And it's going to give me the name here, the title, with the copy at the end of it. So, of course, the first thing I'm going to want to do is update this. This keeps my URL to generate from the new product name without keeping this weirdo test product dash two dash copy name. So I could just change this to test product three and save. Now. If I wanted to, say for example, just make slight changes here to this product, it is a new workbook, or let's say it's actually just a reference book instead of a workbook. Again, my backwards reverse U here, I can add a new category right here. It will fall under books, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the parent categories books, but let's just add reference here as our new product category. And then I can go ahead and uncheck, because again, everything gets duplicated, I go ahead and uncheck workbooks to make sure that now this book is only under that references category. And then I would come in here, I would change my product image, I would change my image gallery, come down to the bottom to finish off my U, change my short description, and then I like to jump all the way to the top, change my long description, and then I like to save my draft. Now, of course, I highly recommend every little change that you make it always helps to save your draft along the way to make sure that you don't lose any valuable time or information that you've input. Now if I scroll back down here, I can go to that product data box and I can go ahead and make edits. So again, we're on about variable product. So I could just go down to the variations and I could change maybe the price to our physical book, make it $20.99. And then our ebook version, let's say that's gonna be $14.99. And then I would change out my file that I'm downloading, of course, because I don't want them to download the other book. So I could just go in here, choose file, select a different PDF, and then insert that file, and then go ahead and update that download name as well. But for the most part, this is fairly easy to copy and duplicate. It only takes a couple of, a couple of minutes here. Once you've created the one product, it's really easy to go forward. So then I just suggest pick the product that is most like the product that you want to add to your shop and duplicate that product. Uh, typically, I start with the, whether it's a simple product or a variable product, and then I'll continue down the similarities chain to find the product that's the closest to save myself the most amount of time. 
If you found this video to be helpful, I would greatly appreciate you leaving a comment down below and let us know how we're doing. And check out our other WordPress tutorials in the Whiskey and Red channel. Thanks for stopping by.